Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 video of analysis of algorithms. In this video, we will discuss about few examples on asymptotic notations. Let's take this example. So here, what they are doing is, so they have a and b initialized to 0 and then looping through n times and adding a random number to a, then looping through m and adding a random number to b. So let's compute time and space complexity of this. I have taken cost and time. For this line, uh, let's say C1 is the cost and the number of times it executed is only one since it's an initialization. And this and we have loop. So the cost is C2, but the number of times is n time. Then coming to this line. So since this inside the loop, it will also execute for n time and the cost differs and again so here the number of times we execute is m times so similarly for this so let's submit all so c1 class n into c2 class c3 class n into C4 plus C5. Now we can neglect these constants. As we discussed in the big word notation, we can neglect these constants. So it will become n plus m. Right? So the, comp the time complexity is you can say big O n plus m. So coming to space complexity. So in this code, so are we taking any extra space like arrays or hash maps anything uh, here I don't see any so here we have only a equal to 0 b equal to 0 so these so integers will take up 4 bytes of space so 2 into 4 so it is 8 bytes so we can say which is of constant space complexity now let's take another example so in this example, similar to the first example, but here we can see two loops and then another loop. So here we can see this loop is an inner loop of this. So we need to be very careful in identifying those inner loops and outer loops. So similarly, let's calculate the cost and times. So we know this is C1 and it's only one time and we know this is c2 n times this is c3 now this how many times this will execute so for every i for every value of i it will execute n times for n values it will execute for n square time so this is a c4 and n3 coming to this so here this is another loop so here let's say cost c5 and the number of times is n and this c6 and the number of times is n. Now if we sum this what we will get is c1 plus n into c2 plus c5 plus c6 plus n square into c3 plus c4. Now we can ignore the constant terms. So now we end up with n square plus n. So also we need to ignore the lower order term. So here the highest order is 2. This is 1, right? So we can ignore this. So this is big O of n square time complexity. So coming to space complexity similar to the previous example, it is of big O of 1 space complexity. Now let's take an another example. So similarly, in the previous example, as I said, since we have two loops, so can we say this executes big O of n square time? No. Why? Because we need to understand the code first, then only we need to compute the time complexity. So since this code has two loops, it doesn't mean that it will execute for big O of n square. Right. So let's see the code. 
so this so this line executes n times here we are taking j instead to n and then here the loop condition is j should be greater than i and j minus minus so let's let's take n equal to 5 then i equal to 0 so j will be 5 4 3 2 1 so when it comes to 0 this condition doesn't exist so that means it doesn't run we see here this is running for n times and this n minus 1 and this n minus 2 n minus 3 1 so that means from n n minus 1 and so on to 1 so this is executing for n n minus 1 and so on to till 1 time so when we compute the cost and the number of times and then we do the computation so it's somewhere we will get the term n square why because in the first time it is assumed for n time right so that means we can say this code is executed for the big of n square now let's take another example so this is a recursive code so here this is the function name and we can see that here is the same function is calling recursively here here and here so let's try to understand this code what it is trying to do so it, it it's getting a vector and then number k and then start n so here k is uh, the number which we want to find the number of occurrences so here this is similar to the binary search so here this is the recursive stop condition if the start is greater than n return 0 and this is we are get computing mid so if the value of mid in the vector is less than k then we are narrowing our search to the mid plus 1 to end and similarly here and then if if it is neither of these conditions that means if it is equal to mid then that means that we found it we found it once so that's why we are doing one here plus we also need to find the other occurrences that means we need to again narrow down our search to the left and also to the right so in order to find the time complexity of this code we need to we need to take the a worst case so the worst case would be let's say if all the elements are equal like this then in this case what will happen in this case so we can see there are two recursive calls here and there are single recursive calls here so that means in this case what will happen is only these calls will be made correct so again so how does these calls are being made so how uh, this this will be one half of the uh, vector and this will be the other half of the vector so we can say t of n which is the solution to t of n by 2 right so because two times we are making recursive calls and each time we are making to the half each half so that that's why n by 2 here plus some constant time so for, for, for the other uh, statements we can take constant time so how do we solve the recurrence so we can solve this by two ways so one is uh, substitution and there is master theorem so we can simply use uh, the uh, substitution method for this so now let's substitute t of n here again if we substitute n by 2 in this formula so what we will get is 2 into 2 into t of n by 4 sorry plus t here plus t so that means 4 into t of n by 4 plus 2c so again this 2c we can say again in the quantum so we can say plus t n by so similarly again if we substitute here what we get 8 into t of n by 8 plus and so on if we substitute for n so n into t of n by n let's see so this is t of 1 so n into t of 1 plus c so what is t of 1 here so here t of 1 means in our code when you have 
when you're left with only one element so that means this condition will satisfy and it will return so which is the constant time so we can say echo of n now let's take another example so this is also a recursive code <coughs> so here let's observe what they are trying to do so the function name is find min path okay so where are the recursive calls here and here okay so from this what we can understand is it's an 2d vector and we are trying to find path from the start to r and c so when we have a 3d grid let's say 3d grid something like this so from start to end so uh, to find the path so here they are making two calls one is to the right and one is to the seems like down so if you take this so they are making two calls one is r plus one which is to the down uh, another is to the right like this so again from from every uh, point they are making two calls so we can again form a recursive equation which is t of n equal to right t of n minus r plus t of n minus c plus some k now let's try to build an uh, recursive tree for this so we have t of n we have t of n minus r so let's say in this case let's say it's for t of the 3 by 3 matrix right let's say it's starting 0 comma 0 so it will be for uh, 0 comma 0 so that means 1 comma 0 and then t of 0 comma 1 again from this 2 comma 0 and then here t of 1 comma 1 so if you build the whole tree it will become a complete binary tree right at each level we can see how many how many how many calls are being made so here one so which is 2 power of 0 we can say and here 2 power of 1 here it will be 2 square because it's a complete binary 2 2 cube and so on let's sum all of the recursive calls at each level so we will get 2 power of 0 plus 2 power of 1 plus 2 square plus and so on plus 2 power of i where i is a level and plus and so on till how many rows and how many columns we have so we know that r and c are the rows and columns so the calls are made till r minus 1 and c minus 1 only so we will get is r plus c the formula for computing the sum of first n terms in geometric series is a into r power of n minus 1 by r minus 1 where r is greater than 0 in our case what is r r is 2 and what is n n is r plus c minus 2 and now we substitute this in the formula so what we will get is a is the first term which is 1 okay r is the 2 and n is r plus c minus 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 so implies 2 power of r plus c minus 2 minus 1 so ignoring the constant we will end up with big o of 2 power of r plus c let's take an another example so by looking at this example we might be tempted to say it is big o of n square so we need to find out implicitly so how many times this statement is getting executed then only we should come to the conclusion let's take n equal to 4 so we see that i ranges from 4 to i greater than 0 and each time i is getting half so that means our initial i is 4 in this case what will be the j values j will be 0 1 2 and 3 now 
if then i value will be 2 then j values will be 0 and 1 then i will be 1 then j will be 0 only 0 now i will be 0 but we know that this condition is not satisfying and this won't execute now if you look at carefully so this statement depends on this guy right so that means uh, we see that this is executing for n times and then it is executing for n by 2 times and uh, uh, this is for n by 4 right so n is 4 so <coughs> now again we see that this is in a geometric progression so in order to find the time complexity we can sum all of all these terms so what we will get is n plus n by 2 plus n by 4 plus and so on to compute the sum of all the terms in infinite geometric series we need to use a formula which is a by 1 minus r where r, r should be less than 0 in our case r is 1 by 2 right so uh, what is a a is n by 1 minus 1 by 2 so which will be 2n so ignoring the, ignoring the constant we will get is big of n that's it for this video thank you very much for watching this video